Happy Easter and welcome to the Northfield Congregational Church's online worship service for Easter Sunday. As you join us for this service today, we hope and pray that you will experience God's love in a new and refreshing way through the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are always welcome at Northfield. My name is Maggie Kins, and I've grown up in the Northfield Church my entire life. My parents were Pat and Dave Brown. A funny story, they were on a trip in the mid-90s and ended up in Jerusalem, where they took a real palm branch from Jerusalem and Federal expressed it to Northfield Church. So for Palm Sunday and Easter that year, there was a real true branch from Jerusalem where the members could imagine may have come from the same tree that Jesus walked by. Also, as I grew up as a young girl in the church, I would spend my Easter Sundays with some lifelong Northfield friends, Carolyn Cotter, Eric Bechtel, Liz Pike, Kip Sanford, Rob Thompson, and our dear Larry Ohms. So may God bless you and your family on this Easter morning and always. Happy Easter. Our Easter scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 11. Hear the word of God. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So Mary ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. And Mary said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in. And he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. Here ends the reading. Good morning, my sisters and brothers. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Death has been swallowed in victory. The grave has lost its sting. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Jesus Christ is risen today, Alleluia, our triumphant holy day, Alleluia, who did once upon the cross, Alleluia, suffer to redeem our lives. of praise then let us sing alleluia unto christ our heavenly king alleluia who endured the cross and the grave alleluia sinners to redeem and to save Oh. Uh -huh. 
pains which he endured. Alleluia! Our salvation have procured. Alleluia! Now above the sky he's king. Alleluia! Where the angels ever sing. We appreciate you gathering with us today on Easter Sunday. Thank you for everything you have done to help us through this pandemic. We ask that you continue to keep us and our loved ones safe. We appreciate all your efforts to help us come together again. Thank you. Amen. The second scripture reading is from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 11 through 18. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was him. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them what he had said and said these things to her. Here ends the reading. At this time, I'd like to ask for you all to take a deep and spirit-filled breath, to find the ground beneath your feet and to join your hearts with mine in our Easter prayer. Beloved, Christ has risen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. I said, this is the day the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. Beloved, today is Easter, the most joyful day in history. This is the day when our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, conquered sin and death for us and rose into new life. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Norfield, I am so happy to be sharing this Easter day with you all in this outpost of God's beloved community. Today is the day we celebrate good, triumphing over evil, and where we shout from the rooftops that our Lord and Savior has risen. Throughout this past year of pandemic, and isolation. And even in the midst of joy like this, so many of us struggle to let the light in. On this Easter, Lord, we ask that you forgive us all our sins. We know that sometimes we fail to live up to our potential. We know sometimes we fail to love one another as you loved us. But on this Easter, we know that through your death and resurrection, all our sins are forgiven. Lord, be with us this day and every day. Help us to shine your light, hope, and love into a world as we walk by faith and not by sight into new life. 
Allow us to be vessels of your mercy, traveling throughout the world to spread love and grace. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, so we can be your hands and free feet, bringing divine justice into reality. Give us the tools and opportunity to build your kingdom here on earth. And Lord, we thank you for giving us your only Son. We thank you for becoming one of us to suffer and to show us how to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. We remember your Apostle Judas who betrayed you to your death. And even though he betrayed you, you still allowed him to eat from your last supper. Help us to love like you have loved. Help us to understand the struggles and suffering and pain around us so we can be motivated by your Holy Spirit to go out and heal your world. Lord God, on this Sunday, this Easter Sunday, let us be your Easter people. Shine your light on us, we pray. Strengthen us on our journey and hasten the end of this pandemic. Fill us with your power and let us be an Easter people, living into your resurrection this year as we come and need new life in you. Help us to have an imagination for new creation and new life in you. And all these things we ask in your holy name, lifting them up to you, using the words your Son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Beloved, our third scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 1 through 11. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living? among the dead. He is not here, he has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners, and be crucified on the third day, and rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other woman who were with them when this was told to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. Here ends the reading.
Life-giving God, may the power that raised Jesus from the dead fill your people anew this Resurrection Sunday so that we might boldly embody your love in all corners of this world that you so, so love. Amen. We begin the Easter tale with Mary Magdalene. For Mary, it had been one long, never-ending, sleepless night. So Mary got up and paced the floor. And then she tried to sleep again, but to no avail. So Mary got up and paced the floor again, and then went back to bed, but again, to no avail. And so Mary got up again and paced the floor, back and forth and forth and back, but still, Sleep eluded Mary. And by now, it was early in the morning. So Mary decided to just get up and head out to the cemetery. The Bible says it was very early in the morning. How early? In the military, we would say it was old dark 30. In the South, they would say it was before it was day in the morning, meaning just before the break of dawn. So it was still dark when Mary got up and headed for the graveyard where Jesus was entombed to do for Jesus' body what there had not been time to do on the day of Jesus' crucifixion. And that was to give his body the customary burial treatment, which was a liberal anointing with sweet-smelling spices. Perhaps Mary hoped it would bring her peace and relief from the horrible stench of that Friday we call good. That Friday. That Friday. When the one on whom all the hopes of all the years, the one believed to be the long-awaited liberating Messiah, had been nailed to a cross. That Friday. When according to John's gospel, Jesus uttered the last words of his earthly life, it is finished. That Friday, when Mary, the other women, and only the disciple called John stood and watched as Jesus breathed his last breath, gave up his spirit, and allowed death to collect its proud and victorious toll, death, death. There is such a finality to death. From one end of human history to the other, death is the one sting that cannot be unstung. The one place from which there is no escape, no matter how great of an escape artist one might be. You know the late Harry Houdini thought otherwise. Houdini told his wife Bess that when he died, if there was any way if there was any way possible to escape death's hold on him, he would find it. And he would return from the dead, he promised her. And at the time, people said, if anybody, if anybody could escape the locks and chains that death holds the key to, if anyone could break the never-to-be-broken shackles that, that death has forged, if anyone could escape death's proud triumph over life, it would be the great escape artist himself, Harry Houdini. But despite his boast that nothing was ever 100% escape proof, Harry Houdini has never escaped death's hold on him. Then there's Elvis Presley, who has been spotted so many times since his death that people still tell tales of the latest Elvis sightings. You know, each and every year, on the anniversary of Elvis's death, thousands of teary-eyed Elvis fans gather at, Grace, at Elvis's graceless mansion, 
Graceland Mansion, wishing, hoping, and praying for Elvis' return. But despite Elvis' immense popularity and the still lingering grief of his adoring fans, Elvis has left the building and will not be returning for an encore performance. You know, in his poem, Death Be Not Proud, John Don challenges death not to be so arrogant. John Don says death, be not proud, though some have called thee mighty and dreadful, for thou art not so. And Don wrote this little sonnet because death believes it's the biggest, the baddest, the meanest thing around. And everyone treats death as if death is the king of kings. And that's understandable because nothing seems to pacify death. One would think there ought to be something that keeps death from exacting its toll on the living. Fame comes to mind. Shouldn't being born into a royal family or getting elected president of the United States or winning an Oscar earn one an escape from death's card? How about fortune? Shouldn't having all the gold in Fort Knox or all the jewels in the crown, or all the oil in the kingdom, or having more money than Warren Buffett, or Mark Zuckerman, or even Oprah could ever spend, give one the right or the privilege of buying a one-way escape ticket from death. But no, death comes to one and all. Death comes to one and all in every time and in every place. And death allows no exceptions to the rule. Anybody, everybody who is born has an unbreakable date with death. Every living thing that breathes, every living being lives with the reality that death is going to collect its final never to live again, told. Well, maybe. Because now we have to get back to Mary and the other women and the tale we are told that early that first Easter morning, while it was still dark, Mary got up and headed to the place where Jesus had been entombed. And when Mary arrived, the reason for Mary's sleepless night became known. There was something not quite right at the tomb of Jesus. The huge, once we seal and set it, it can never be moved again stone that was supposed to seal Jesus in the grave for all eternity. That huge stone had been rolled away and Jesus' body was gone. And now beside herself with grief, Mary ran from the cemetery to find the disciples to tell them not the good news that Jesus had risen from the dead, but the bad news that something was amiss at the cemetery, that the stone had been rolled away and Jesus' body was missing. And when Mary told the disciples they went to check out what Mary was talking about. And not knowing what to make of it, they checked it out and left. And left Mary there alone, alone with her grief, alone not knowing what to make of this thing that had happened. And then, as Mary was standing there weeping, Mary noticed someone. Perhaps it was the gardener. Maybe the gardener could tell her who had taken Jesus' body away. Perhaps the gardener could tell her what they had done with Jesus' body. And then she could go to his body and give Jesus' body a proper burial. And then, perhaps, she could go home and finally get some sleep. But the one she believed was the gardener turned to her, and he called her by name, Mary. And in the sound of her name, Mary's eyes were open, and she knew then who it was standing before her. And in that moment of recognition, Mary's world was transformed, and her misery turned to merriment, her grief 
to glory and her night of weeping to a morning of joy. Jesus was alive and Jesus was standing there right before her. And that was enough. And with that, Mary ran to the place where the disciples were and announced, I have seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord. And the disciples wondered, what was wrong with Mary? Is Mary delusional from the trauma of Good Friday? Is Mary suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder? Or is Mary imagining things because of a lack of sleep? Now, imagine you had been there that first Easter morning with those disciples. When Mary comes running and saying of all the silliest of things, guess what? The stone has been rolled away. The tomb is empty, and I have seen the Lord. And when the other women also told the disciples, they too had seen men in dazzling clothing at the sight of the tomb of Jesus, who wondered why these women were looking for the living in a place meant for the dead, and that the two men told them Jesus had indeed risen, just as he told them he would. When these women told the disciples what they had seen and what they had heard, the disciples didn't believe a word these women were saying. They thought these women were doing nothing but, as the Bible says, telling an idle tale. Telling an idle tale. Well, what would you have thought? How would you have reacted if you were a man and those women came to you with such a tale about rolling stones, empty tombs, and Jesus alive, resurrected from the dead? You too might have said, women, so easily excitable always making mountains out of molehills, way too emotional as uh, how one public official put it recently about women. And of course, from the vantage point of this side of history, women would be justified in saying, that's just like men, know-it-alls who too, all too often know next to nothing. But let's not be too hard on these disciples. After all, just three days ago, Jesus had been certified, crucified, and then put in a tomb and sealed behind a solid, unmovable stone. As far as these men knew, Jesus was indeed dead, buried, and done with. So it was hard for them to hear the words of those women that Jesus is alive, and I have seen the Lord. Because every known experience of life speaks against a resurrection from the dead. Every known experience we've ever had tells us there is nothing after death, that death is life's ultimate finish. And of course, the disciples were still living in a Good Friday world. And every fiber of their collective being was still living in a reality where Jesus was dead and buried, never to be seen again. And so what they heard from Mary and the other women couldn't be anything more than an idle tale. An idle tale. And so the disciples did not believe a word they were saying. Not unlike so many of us this morning, for us too, the idea of a resurrection from the dead sounds like an idle tale told to fools. But Easter is no idle tale. And if you only come to worship on Easter when the trumpets are sounding and the choir is at its best and the crowd is bursting, you miss everything else in between. You miss what the birth of Christ and what the resurrection of Jesus Christ means. You miss the real significance of a life of faith that helps us know the God who is faithful when we are lost in the wilderness and can't seem to find our way out. When we are trapped under the weight of our addictions and in need of divine liberation. When all seems lost in our lives, and we are filled with despair and uncertain about tomorrow, and we require the hope that only God can offer, then, yes, then we need to be more than CEOs. We need to be more than Christmas and Easter-only people. Because Easter is more than bunnies and baskets stuffed with goodies. Easter is more than the great Easter egg hunt and happily ever after lives. Easter is about the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. I know. I know there are some who would rather we skip right over the resurrection. 
Because a resurrection sounds too fantastic. A resurrection sounds too incredible. A resurrection sounds too otherworldly. And we want to live in reality. But we won't. We cannot let the resurrection go. Because that's what Easter and that's what our faith is all about. Easter is about the one who was crucified, died, and then rose from the dead. And without the resurrection, according to the Apostle Paul, our faith is meaningless. Without Easter, our faith is without merit. Without Easter, we have nothing more than an idle tale. And if what we believe is nothing more than an idle tale, well, then we do need to do nothing more than see the beautiful lilies, sniff their fragrance, sing an alleluia or two, visit the Easter bunny at the mall, and then go home with our lives undisturbed. But we who are gathered, whether online or in person, gather on Easter because we believe Easter is no idle tale. And the truth is that one by one, each of the disciples had the same amazing encounter with the risen Savior. And they had this, these encounters for themselves. And you know what they did? They took this so-called idle tale and they told it. So that we are still living and telling this tale over 2,000 years later. And my sisters and brothers, we need to hold on to this idle tale. Because there are those who say that Easter is nothing more than an attempt to create a happily ever after ending for what is really nothing more than life is tough and then we die. And they would be correct. That's all Easter is, an idle tale. Unless, unless, unless we let Easter do what Easter did that first Easter morning, and that is change lives and transform our world. And the women believed, and the disciples believed, and instead of going back to bed with dreams of how nice it was the way everything turned out, those first believers set out to share this so-called idle tale in the face of stoning, imprisonments, angry mobs, and upside-down crucifixions. And they told this so-called idle tale to a disbelieving world. And somehow, this so-called idle tale was spread and is still being told around the world over 2,000 years later. No, Easter is no idle tale. Because Easter is bigger, Easter is grander, and Easter is far more transformative than anything we could ever conceive of or imagine. And because Easter is a tale of God's love loosed in our world, Easter is a tale of God's presence going before us and saying to us, saying to death, of all things, death be not proud. Easter is a tale of love. Easter is a tale of joy. Easter is a tale of hope. And, and, and this so-called tale, this so-called idle tale, is still worth telling. And so I come this morning with no idle tale, but with this good news of great joy, that with those first believers on that first Easter morning, and with believing Christians all over this planet, we proclaim our hope, we, that we proclaim our hope did not die on a cross. We proclaim that our faith was not buried in the ground. We proclaim Jesus Christ, is not sealed behind a stone of death. But today, we proclaim this tale and this glorious affirmation. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, amen. From the cloak of darkness came rays of illumination. What was to be the most despaired in the end became a glorious beginning. From death rose everlasting love and life. The story of the resurrection reminds us of these gifts that, Lord, you impart to us every day. Let us show our gratitude through our support of your church. Let us recognize those in need and support each other as stewards of your word. Let us now offer our Easter gifts.
Dear Lord, we offer to you these gifts with humble gratitude. Let us remember that what was dark can become light. What seems to be the end was just the beginning, and from finite death came infinite glory and resurrection. May we go forth this Easter with renewed optimism and strength and faith. Amen. Receive now the benediction. Christ the Lord is risen today. Angels rolled the stone away. It seems that death has lost its prey. Christ the Lord is risen today. A blessed Easter to each and every one of you. Amen. Amen.